There's uh, Yule. Yule went there. Iverson, you know, Iverson's pit, fame, pit uh, fame at uh, Gettysburg. There was Confederate officers that went to school there. In fact, the one saved uh, Dixon College from being burnt down. It said, now in school, they don't do that. The college at the time when the Civil War started, it was, they had a large Confederate, well, so Southern contingent going to school there. And coming back, what was kind of the, the, the response once, you know, some union showed up after? Oh, they were happy. They thought we were going to be saved. And hurrah, hurrah. And then all of a sudden, here comes Jeb Stewart. He's done in hand. He comes up to Dillsburg and leaves a third of his men behind Baker's Restaurant. Then halfway Old York Road, he leaves another half with 125 stolen wagons in Churchtown in his fields near the new rudders in that cemetery. And then the remaining third, Fitz Lee's troops come in at Lowe's and they put cans somewhere in the area of Burger King, maybe up a little higher on a ridge. And then down at Speedway, where until 1905, that's where they hung people in Carlisle and State Police got invented. And then more artillery over at uh, the giant grocery store. And several of your artillery hits, like on the courthouse column, across from the Cumberland County Monument, and at Northwest Street and uh, West Lowther, there's artillery damage. That's all from the giant grocery store. The windowsill at the bank sort of lines up with Speedway. I can't guarantee you that's where it's from, but it's right in line with the Kansas Speedway. The original Lutheran Church, which is now the Bedford Street Antique Mall, that probably is your Burger King cannons. The Episcopal Church in the square had damage. That could have been from Speedway gas station. I know the, the Killer Angel group. But, when that, but, but then what happens is, you know, Venable comes up, Major Venable, and says, you're supposed to be in Gettysburg. So they backtracked Forge Road to Boiling Springs, then over to 34 south of Carlisle, they went to Gettysburg. They were just getting ready to go in. You mentioned the school, so I've been the barracks, so some of those things are, are the same, but you know, what was the makeup of the town? Um, let's see, the, uh, la, 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 la. the census, 1860. York was 8,600, Carlisle was 5,600. Canicksburg was 2,400, no, 2,000. Gettysburg was 2,400, Harrisburg was 14,000. But, I mean, they had a lot of Southern friends. I mean, a lot of these guys were in, they were greeting Iverson like almost like a hero. You know, he's walking through town, hey, how are you doing? You know, it's South Central PA. Oh. The people, they weren't causing any issues. Now, there was a group of Jenkins men that broke off as they were coming in Trindle Road, I call it Confederate Invasion Route. And at Old Stone House Road, they go in and loot the post office grocery store in Churchtown. It's now just a house. But they looted that, and a guy has the original. When he was a kid, they, he, they let him go up in the attic, and he found the postal drawer at the prior marks from the Confederates as they tore it open to steal money, steal stamps. They are always like going in the post offices and stealing because they thought, thought they'd find government papers that were important. Is it, was, so was post offices, telegraphs, and railroads, was that like some of the major things that they wanted to hit whenever they... Yeah, they wanted to mess up the canals. The four railroads that used Harrisburg as their hub. I mean, look, today, Harrisburg's always been a hub of transportation. You got, you figure 50-some warehouses all over 81, 83, and now they're starting in large intersections from Dillsburg to Gettysburg. What do you think that's about? <laughs> and they already started building some warehouses in Dillsburg. So that's, that's why we sort of have an employment issue around here, because you figure how many thousands of people are not working retail and fast food, they're getting a good paycheck at a warehouse. And I've known some restaurant people who told me their employees are going to the warehouses, which I don't blame them, yeah. you know. <clears throat> and uh, so this area's always been the keystone of the Keystone State when it comes to transportation. I mean, you, you bring the Western states into Harrisburg, they go to war. Northeast comes into Harrisburg, they filter down in the war, there's four rail lines. What happens after the battles? The Confederates are shipped to Harrisburg hospitals, you know? And then in 1864, Elmira, New York finally opens and they help thin out the overpopulated prisons in New York and uh, Fort Delaware. 
off the coast of Delaware. They're going up to Elmira, New York. So when you hear people saying, Rebs went up from Gettysburg to Elmira, I don't think so, because it didn't open until 1864. But the, uh, one of the Confederate hospitals in Harrisburg is the, well, all your United Church of Christ, which was 1957 when they started, all your um, German reform became United Church of Christ. So the German reform at Third and Chestnut was a Confederate hospital. There's 135 shells. And I think a lot of it was solid shot because there wasn't like destruction of buildings. They were just getting hit with solid shot to scare people, knock stuff down. But that's a Jeb, Jeb was in there the night of the first and he was getting ready to go in. That's when he said, they finally found him to get to Gettysburg. Or he was gonna go in and finally take the town. See the guys that fought out on Carlisle Pike at Sporting Hill walked all the way to Carlisle. So when they got to Carlisle, they were dead. They just laid in the street sleeping. And they thought, oh, we're saved and blah, blah, blah. So um, then they found out that wasn't true. Then rumor was Jeb's coming leaving Carlisle heading to Harrisburg. So some of the militia unit puts lookouts atop of Ward's Bridge Road there at that Lutheran church to watch them, because that was a turnpike, that was a major road coming into Harrisburg. And they said for days there was Union campfires along or, down at Ward's Bridge there at the creek at night, because that's where they camped for days to guard the invasion coming in from Carlisle, which never happened. See, what's happening, we have all these books on the Civil War that have been written, you have one half in a day since the war's been over, been written on the American Civil War. And now with computers, guys are researching and finding letters from historical societies, regiments, that these guys who wrote the book in the 70s, 80s, 90s didn't have a computer. So they're finding out stories are changing a little bit, like old books, on Sporting Hill had the 16th and 36th Virginia with the 34th backing it up. And really it was the 34th Virginia now with those backing them up. And the reason why is Cooper Winger came across a newspaper article with General, with Witcher saying about uh, he was the head and who was in charge of Jenkins men at Gettysburg with helping Jeb Stewart, Clawhammer Witcher because Jenkins on day two, his horse's head gets blown off and shrapnel gets him and he's not right till May of 64. So Witcher was in charge of the troops here at Sporting Hill and he's in charge of Jenkins' troops at Gettysburg with Jeb Stewart on East Calvary Battlefield day three. Now Jenkins comes back May of 64 and uh, he gets shot and captured at the Battle of Cloyd's Mountain. They cut his arm off and the next day, um, they were checking the ligature that tied the main artery and they nicked it and he bled to death. So that was the end of General Jenkins. Of course, which he deserved that because what he was taking escaped and free blacks coming up through Pennsylvania, he was told not to do it. So he got his just reward. I guess underrepresented is, is, is Civil War history, you know, this side of Gettysburg because everybody seems to think that. Right. You just had that. Right, well that's been what I've been pounding for 30 years. And especially on this store, now that I retire from being a mailman of 40 years in 2012, it gives me more time to preach it. And I mean, the guides at Gettysburg hired me, the guide uh, foundation, whatever they call themselves. You can belong to that, you don't have to be a guide. And then who doesn't fill the seats and the guides are allowed to fill the rest of the seats. So I gave them a, five-hour tour back in 2018 and they were just amazing. See, Cumberland County, it was bigger. It just wasn't the killing. That's what Gettysburg got all the, you know, 8,000 killed, 24,000 wounded, all the, you know, 55,000, you know, 50,000, 52, whatever, all your killed, missing, and wounded, your casualties. 1,500 dead horses. There's just so many stories. So this area, I mean, just you got to realize they come to Shippensburg. Jenkins goes out to Newburgh, Newville, and the Carlisle. It's like a three-pronged fork. And of course, when Trindle Road hits Carlisle and Route 11, they crisscross. And now Route 11 here is out towards the mountains and 641's on the toll-free road. So Route 11 was Allegheny Johnson with all supplies. That's your Culp's Hill Confederate. So 
He's there at Alexander Springs, which is four miles west from the square. That's as close as he gets in. And then you have the 8,500 under roads coming in Walnut Bottom Road. You can't have 15,000 guys all in the same street. You got to thin them out. So roads, which is your piece like Confederates, day one. He's coming in Walnut Bottom in the Carlisle. Allegheny Johnson is up the gut. Carlisle Pike, semi-paved road, crushed oyster shells and stone with oil. And they'd slide together and compact and be tight. And then Jenkins, of course, was ahead of them coming in on 641. Now there was also the first Maryland, I don't know if I said this earlier, if they were gonna go over the mountains over Starrett's Gap to Shermansdale to Marysville and check out the Northern Invasion route. And uh, when they found out there's 12th New York National Guard, several companies, 200 guys lined Starrett's Gap, they returned to Carlisle. That's the high water mark without killing in the American Civil War. And there is a monument, state markers before 1933 are big boulders with bronze plaques. Some of them were taken from the Gettysburg Battlefield, permission of the War Department. And the one above Carlisle Springs, one mile north of Route 944, Wordsville Road in 34, it has, this is the farthest point north, the Army of Northern Virginia under Robert E. Lee, reached in the American Civil War, hearing the hills were fortified, they returned to their outpost in Carlisle, thus ends the high tide of the Confederacy. Now what's really interesting is another unit of the 12th New York National Guard is guarding the Statue of Liberty Bridge in Northern Central in Marysville. And the one member in that unit was Boston Corbett who kills John Wilkes Booth April 26, 1865, the same day Johnson surrenders to Sherman.